been on Boston Fire about 18 years now, um, but two years ago I was promoted to Fire Lieutenant, and being promoted kind of at the same time kind of started this trend where I started to get more into, obviously, you know, I've always loved the job and been into the job, but being promoted kind of set that next level where I want to be more of the teaching, because that's part of obviously being a fire officer. I want to be a good fire officer. So I got involved with the training. Um, so from there, I just, just happened to coincide with Commissioner Finn and some of his staff also, you know, beginning their positions in the Boston Fire. It was almost uh, perfect timing, as you could say, because when I got promoted, a lot of these new people were in the new positions, new training staff. Um, the commissioner himself implemented a new safety, health, and wellness program. And I just kind of, you know, I hopefully, I think I was in the right place at the right time, but I think hopefully my um, experience on the job and reputation hopefully helped a little bit. But I was lucky enough to be involved in a lot of different projects right off the bat. And I got a chance to meet uh, Gavin, Dr. Gavin Horn at the Fire Us Expo in San Diego earlier in the year. I took his class that he did with um, Dr. Smith and I was intrigued by it and I actually kind of after class pulled him aside and said, boy, I, I, can, I don't want to speak for Boston, but we'd love to be part of this going forward. And he happened to mention that he did speak to different people in our staff about working with us in the future. And you know, here I am eight months later and part of it, so I'm ecstatic. So looking at it, you've gone through two thirds of what you're going to go through, correct? Two of the three scenarios? Uh, one so far. Tomorrow's our second, right? Okay. Uh, our last day is so, Thursday. First scenario, what are, your, what are your general thoughts on it? Well, going into it, you know, I knew it was, they were going to be evaluating some of the, the risks that we face in live fire training. And, you know, I didn't really know what to expect. I know what we do in Boston as far as live fire training. We try to make it realistic and, you know, we try to get the heat and the smoke to be as, you know, realistic as possible. So I didn't really know what to expect. And I was very surprised and happily surprised that, you know, it, the conditions were very realistic and we felt some heat and, you know, sure. and I noticed that they, what they were using for their fuel load was, you know, maybe a little less than I would have expected, but used the right way, you know, right. I mean, I was just throwing pallets on there, right. but it was, I was, I was impressed and definitely felt realistic, so. Good. Well, looking at that, there are people that are already saying or, or may already be concerned about, hey, if we dig too deep into this, um, we may have to change the way we do live fire training and maybe even lessen some of the experiences that we've already received with that. What are your thoughts on that? Having gone through an evolution, you said it, it, it felt very realistic. Well, like I, when I was talking about when I got promoted, I was lucky enough to be involved in training and I spent um, a few months as an instructor at the academy where we were doing live burns constantly over and over again. And it's kind of interesting that no one really ever looked at that side of it, you know, and that's the reality for most departments, even in Boston. You know, we're a busy department, FDNY. No matter where you are, fires are down and training fires are up. So to look at training fires in a different way is, I think, kind of a smart idea and long time coming. So as a Boston firefighter going back, um, you're kind of the messenger. What do you hope to take away from this and ultimately deliver to uh, the firefighters <clears throat> in Boston? I, well, right off the bat, just the, some of the people I've met in this the short time, you know, getting to work with some of the guys from FDNY and listen to the retired chief from Chicago, uh, Chief Van Thorpe. He made a good point. I, I didn't get a chance to pull him aside, but he, he said, you know, are we just doing fires just to do them, you know, is it more important to, hey, maybe lessen the load of the fire, you know, because you're seeing some of our, you know, more experienced guys, maybe they struggle in these training fires. Are they really that realistic? Because I'd take that guy any day of the week in a real fire, but maybe in the training fires, you know, with the, everybody's watching and judging, it doesn't go as smooth. So. We, we can really look at these training fires in different ways. Are we putting unnecessary, you know, taxing the body unnecessarily just to, to try to get that realistic fire? I mean, we approach it in a different way. It's all about getting the, the fundamentals of, and the tactics down. That's more important than, you know, throwing eight pallets on and, you know, sure. pounding yourself on the chest saying, ah, you know, this is realistic. I don't know. Right, right. So looking at the decon process, I know we haven't done a lot with this particular uh, process. Anything happening in Boston uh, as far as the deconning on scene or any changes you've made recently with the experiences that you've had? Yeah, um, in a very short time, just like I said, since the commission has taken over, a lot of things have been implemented. Um, chief Mackin, our safety chief, has implemented things right off the bat. We're doing the, the wipes, you know, the hoods are being replaced constantly. 
they're looking at replacing the gloves on a periodic basis now. Uh, almost all the firehouses now have been outfitted with washers, you know, industrial washers for the gear. So, you know, the gear is being flagged more often at fires. So if somebody shows up with a dirty gear, a chief's kind of like, hey, you know, you got to get that cleaned or off it goes. Um, and also at fires now, we're, we're wearing uh, SCBA during overhaul. That never happened. Um, so we have chief safety chiefs on scene now with meters kind of enforcing the rules. So, and we have actually our fire alarm staff sends out reminders on scene at fires. All members, you know, do not remove your SCBA because, you know, we have guys, first thing they want to do is rip it off. And first thing they want to do is find a window to breathe. So it doesn't make any sense. So. So, so looking at that, certainly not asking you to throw stones or anything like that. Um, do you see much resistance now that this is being pushed pretty aggressively, and I commend the, the commissioner for that. Do you see much of a, a pushback knowing all the history that has been there and a lot of the traditions that, you know, kind of set the stage? Well, there's a little bit of pushback, but we have a younger job now, it's a little, so it's a little easier. The buy-in is the guys in my era, I think. It's the, you got to get the guys, the new officers especially. But the guys with 10 to 20 years on, the guys sometimes who, who think they know what they're doing, or those are the guys who have to step up. You know, it's always the same on our job. It's always been these same experienced instructors, you know, teaching all the skills and kind of enforcing the SOPs and whatnot. You know, then you have the young guys who want to step up, but a lot of times they don't have the, you know, even earned the respect just yet. But it's those guys in the middle that have to step up. And, and yeah, there's some resistance. I know when the hoods were implemented, that was a big change because we used to just kind of throw the face piece on, helmet on, off we go. Now it's a process and, you know, it's just a matter of teaching the guys, you know. Anything else that you, you want to add or maybe share with the audience as far as a, a takeaway for you? <clears throat> uh, I'm just so excited to be part of it because, like I said, being a new officer, I'm not new on the job, but a new officer, it starts all over again. You know, you're looking at things in a different way. I'm in charge of three other guys on the on the engine. So anything I can do to protect them, you know, I just don't want to be that guy, you know, who assumes my guys know what they're doing, you know, because like I said, fires are down everywhere. You know, the training, is the future of all jobs across the country is, is training, you know, and getting the guys to buy in, not only to the tactics of the fire dynamics and, you know, protection with the safety side of it, but just all around, I mean, it's, I don't know, I'm just excited to be part of that kind of sea of change.